Unfortunately for you, it is, Jim. And today, we're going to be talking about Dark Souls 3. Specifically, we're going to discuss the technical side of summoning and invading that I surprisingly haven't seen talked about all that much in the community as a whole. You can hear some whispers here and there on forums, YouTube, and Reddit, but after the game has been out for a year, there hasn't been anything definitive pertaining to what the best soul level ranges are for online play. So I brought together a heaping pile of knowledge and data into this video to tell you how to get the most out of your online experiences in this game, whether it be co-op or invasions. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. First off, let's define what's called soul level range. In order for two players to connect to each other, be it a host summoning a white phantom or a dark spirit invading a host, the two players in question have to be within soul level range of each other. And From Software tried their best to develop several calculations for these interactions to work without being too unfair toward one side or the other. Well, they tried. They also went the extra mile for Dark Souls 3 in order to prevent twinking. And no, that's not just a term to call a young gay guy. Oh, hello! It was coined as a term in MMORPGs where you can give a lower level character later game items that they wouldn't have otherwise have gotten themselves. Making that lower level character more powerful than they probably should be. Why is this called twinking? I have no f***ing clue. In Dark Souls 3, they have it so that not only will your soul level be brought into the equation, but also your weapon reinforcement level. That means upgrading your weapons will have an effect on who you'll be able to connect to. And the game remembers this. So even if you get rid of a plus 10 weapon, the game will remember that you upgraded a weapon to plus 10. And all of the equations involved look something like this. Yeah, a little confusing, right? Let's break it down. Say that a host needs help finding Pontiff Sullivan and they want to summon a friend for jolly cooperation. The host is level 53 with their highest weapon upgraded being plus 6. So this equation happens. Do a little bit of middle school math and the host's effective summoning range is between level 37 and level 68. Keep in mind you do get decimals but the game seems to round these numbers down in the end. The host can also only summon phantoms whose highest weapon reinforcement is either between plus 4 and plus 8. Side note number 1. There are special weapons that don't go up to plus 10, but instead to plus 5. These include boss weapons that require titanite scales and named weapons that require twinkling titanite. These weapons are half of the normal upgrade path, so calculate them as such. If you have a plus 3 Hollow Slayer greatsword, for instance, that means the game will recognize that you have a plus 6 normal Titanite weapon. And if you have a plus 4 Heisel Pick, that means you essentially have a plus 8 normal weapon. You know, you just double the numbers. You know, makes sense? Alright, let's, we're moving on. So let's say that same host, level 53 with plus 6 weapons, gets invaded by a dark spirit and he wants to call the Blue Spirit Police. So he puts on Way of Blue, and his effective Blue Spirit summoning range is between level 32 and level 73. The same weapon reinforcement range applies, plus 4 to plus 8 on that Blue Spirit, whoever it may be. Now I think you're getting the picture here with the numbers. Summoning Phantoms and Blue Spirits are the easiest to understand from this list. You seem to get a relatively equal chance of getting either an underleveled helper, just as much as you would get an overleveled one. But the more insidious calculations lie in the invasions themselves. Say that an invader wants to invade that same host who is level 53 with plus 6 weapons. The highest level that the invader could be is level 59, and the lowest he could be is level 30. See the difference there? Invaders have a much higher chance of finding a host who is a higher level than they are. Whether or not this is fair ultimately comes down to what either side brings to the invasion, and their skills involved. But the difference is still there. Side note number two. You also have to consider that hosts can negate their own summoning range if they put on a password. They can then summon phantoms who are much higher level than they are, who have higher weapon reinforcement levels than they do because passwords negate that too, all in exchange for being scaled down in health and relative damage and defense levels. 
Don't be surprised if you see Havel mages out there fighting as a white phantom, okay? But even with this disadvantage, and many, many others, Invaders still want to invade to this day. So to those invaders out there looking for activity as this game's population will most certainly shrink down over the next few months, as if it hasn't already, your next question ought to be, what are the better invasion ranges out there? To which I have a semi-decent answer for. I have personally found four distinct ranges that you could possibly choose from. The what I'm about to show you shouldn't discourage you from experimenting on your own if you're looking to try something else out. And these ranges are as follows. Early game, mid game, late game, and the meta level. This is only concerning red eye orb invasions by the way. I'll get to covenant invasions in a bit. Let's start with the meta level first. Pretty self-explanatory. It's between soul level 120 and 125. The meta level is generally used for ember dueling, for fight clubs, and for the arena. Though there are a few spots to invade if you choose to do so, mainly in the DLC areas. If you don't have the DLC, invasions will unfortunately be slim, but you'll most likely find a few hosts at some of the more difficult bosses, and definitely a few at Gank City, which is past Pontiff Sullivan and before Anne Orlando, that area. Be sure to always check the humanity icons by each area before you try to invade. These will give you an idea of what's hot and what's not. Early game, on the other hand, is anywhere between soul level 15 to soul level 36. Yes, soul level 15. You think it's crazy, but it's not. Early game has actually become a bit of a tragedy, now that I think about it, but it's still doable if you have the will to try it. And a recent patch from Software changed how weapon reinforcement ranges work, particularly at upgrades lower than plus five. Before this patch, someone with a plus two weapon could invade anyone between plus zero and plus four. Now a plus two weapon can only invade people between plus one and plus three. Again, this doesn't affect weapon upgrades above plus five, but the damage has been dealt to low level invaders. They really cracked down on twinking this time, though this is a bit of a compromise seeing how this also applies to friendly phantoms and blues. They essentially thought of something like this, discourage early game twinking, but give hosts less options for summons. Not like there's any shortage for that out there. Now you're wondering what kind of builds would work for invaders at such a low level? And you'd be surprised. I'm gonna give you two examples for the early game. The first one is at soul level 15 with plus two weapon reinforcement. Start off with a warrior class, then outfit your build with a prisoner's chain for 15 free levels spread across vigor, endurance, and vitality. Be sure to get a hunter's ring too for five more levels put into dexterity. Then your stats should look something like this. And you'll be able to wield the Dragon Slayer's Axe, Flamberge, Arbalist, even the Black Knight Shield if you wanted to be cheeky, and so much more, all at soul level 15. A few of you will probably cry that this is twinking in its worst form, but let me knock you down a peg or two. All these items can be acquired by yourself. In fact, attempt a soul level 15 run of the game while also keeping your weapon reinforcement stuck at only plus two, and you'll have found a challenge worthy of the results. But let's say that you do twink for most, if not all of these items here. You still need to play through the game in order to increase your own Estus count and Estus healing. So there's no way around a soul level 15 run of the game. You don't need to beat all of it, but you still need to play a majority of it. Side note to number three, they have nerfed a majority of raw weapons at lower upgrades, so you will have to take the extra time to decide whether or not a particular weapon will benefit from a raw infusion at all, or maybe you could slap a heavy infusion on there. Again, this requires some extra experimentation. Let's move on to the second example, the legendary Soul Level 36 Pyro from Slothanaut on Twitch. With these stats, you could not only use the Onyx Blade, but you can throw Chaos Bed Vestiges and use Black Flame, some of the most damaging pyromancies in the game. The only downside to both of these examples is the lack of endurance. You will have to manage your stamina a lot more closely in order to avoid being caught with your pants down. But once you've mastered that, you're on the fast track to getting some hate mail. You can be sure of that. But where should you invade early game? This is important. 
So level 15 with plus 2 weapons will most likely find activity on High Wall of Lothric, Undead Settlement, and even into the Crucifixion Woods. Be warned though, the further you go into the game, the more likely of a chance you have at invading higher leveled hosts. So don't be surprised when you're doing less damage than you normally would, and the host is doing more damage to you. On the flip side, soul level 36 with plus 4 or plus 5 weapons will find more activity in the Cathedral of the Deep, Farren Keep, and the Catacombs of Carthus. Now on to the mid game. Area. This is anywhere between soul level 40 to soul level 60. Around here, the builds that tend to shine the most are strength builds, due to the fact that when you two-hand a weapon, your strength gets multiplied by 1.5. So if you put your strength to 27 and two-hand a weapon, you effectively get 40 points into strength while using it which is the soft cap. Those extra points that you're not spending on strength can be put into vigor, endurance, vitality, whatever you want. Here are two examples of builds at this level. At soul level 50, what I did was that I put strength at 35 and dex to 13. I put strength at 35 so I can get more damage out of my one-handed weapon such as the heavy longsword, and I put dex at 13 so I could wield weapons like the claymore, glaive, and four-pronged plow. I also can hold the typical strength weapons such as the Great Club, Mace, Millward Axe, Great Sword, and so much more. Infuse all of these with heavy, and you have quite the variety in weapons. The second example is from Twitch streamer Joseph, though. He uses a raw infused Corvian Great Knife alongside a Millward Great Bow. His build also has a lot more vitality than you would typically see around this level. But the reason for this is so that he could have an under 30% roll, which is the fast roll, which means that he can get out of confrontations a lot quicker and a lot safer than usual. However, he is squishy, so it's a bit of a give and take. Also, both of these builds have weapon reinforcements either at plus 6 or at plus 8, whichever you prefer. The weapon reinforcement patch does not affect these upgrades, so plus 6 can invade anywhere between plus 4 to plus 8, and plus 8 can invade anywhere between plus 6 and plus 10. The areas where you can find the most activity are at the Catacombs of Carthus, Smoldering Lake, Central Irithyll, the area after Pontiff Sullivan, and Irithyll Dungeon. Last, but most definitely not least, is the late game. This is between soul level 70 to soul level 90. Why do we stop at soul level 90? Because if we go up any higher, we'll start to invade the meta level, which is something you don't want because they'll have a 30 level advantage over you. Side note number four. If you're looking to make a blue spirit helper build, a good place to be is at soul level 100. You can be summoned as high as the meta level at 125, and also as low as 75 where the lower levels could be going through their first run of the game. Where the mid game is where strength builds have an easier time winning, it's around the late game where dexterity builds begin to rise. Dexterity can't get that same 1.5 multiplier, which is why it takes them so many extra levels to get better damage, but when they hit that soft cap of 40 damage, and go beyond, they start hitting really, really hard. Look at this. With 14 in strength and 50 in dexterity, you'll be able to use a Lothric sword, Godhard twin sword, Cell sword twin blades, Murakumo if you two hand it, Anakiri and Obadachi, Crow quills, and other weapons with low strength requirements. But let's say that you're not a fan of dex. Let's get creative with soul level 75. This is a strength and faith build, specializing with the crucifix of the Mad King. Smack dark blade and light arrow onto your spells and you've got quite the fearsome arsenal. Say the crucifix isn't doing the job right. You can swap out for Walnir's Holy Sword and get a Hearing Miracle instead. Or respect your points and put on the Lothar Greatsword with a Lightning Blade buff. The choice is yours. Assuming your weapon reinforcement is anywhere between plus 8 and plus 10, you'll be able to invade in the area after Pontiff, Lothric Castle, Grand Archives, Untended Graves, all of Archdragon Peak, and you can also start to invade into the DLC areas. As long as you're not invading the meta level, that is. Now that about covers all invasions concerning the Red Eye Orb, but this video is not done yet. 
Remember those equations from before? Notice how they're different with Mound Maker invasions and Covenant invasions? Mound Makers get a little bit of an increase to their range. This won't necessarily affect you all that much at the lower levels, but if you want to level up as high as you can go and not invade level 120s, you will have to stop leveling at soul level 86 instead of soul level 90, which you did for standard red invasions. The calculation is different if you want to be summoned as a Mad Phantom, though. It's just the same equation as normal light summons. Now Covenant Invasions is where this list get a little bit murky to understand. If you were to take a glance at it, it would seem that Covenant Invaders would be able to invade around 20 levels below their own, when that's actually not the case. This is an equation for the host soul level, not the invaders like it was previously. To put it simply, if you were soul level 50 and you want to invade as an Aldrich Faithful, you can only invade as low as soul level 46 and as high as soul level 88. Thought your chances were bad before? <laughs> Wrong! The only upside to invading with a covenant like Watchdogs of Farron and Aldrich Faithful is that the odds of you getting a partner to help you fight is also extremely high. Most of the time, one covenant invader is quickly aided by another a few moments later. Two covenant invaders also also can't harm each other, which is a huge plus if you're trying to chase down a fleeing phantom or host. So there's also a bit of a compromise. The only problem with Covenant Invasions really lies in its automatic nature. The Covenant is always looking for another suitable host to invade, and at the right levels, you'll find constant back-to-back -back invasions using said Covenant. But that's just it. What's the right level? Aldrich Faithfuls tend to have an easier time finding invasions because of their area's general size and how much later into the game it is. You're not passing by with at least one Aldrich Faithful greeting you. I'd recommend anywhere between soul level 40 to soul level 60, and plus 6 to plus 8 weapon reinforcement for the Aldrich Faithful. That is, unless you want to invade there using the meta level, which is fine. But for the watchdogs out there, they got the short end of the stick. Their covenant area is only the Crucifixion Woods, a relatively small area, especially when you compare it to the area after Pontiff. And thanks to the lopsided covenant invasion equation, you really have to keep your soul level low if you want to find anyone using this covenant. I'd recommend soul level 20 to soul level 25 with plus 2 to plus 3 weapon reinforcement. There's one covenant I didn't mention yet, and that's the Spears of the Church. It's technically a covenant invasion even though you become a literal boss in which another player has to fight in order to progress through the DLC. The wait times for becoming a Spear are a bit longer than typical invasions, but eh, what can you do? It's easy to guess at the kind of host who might be showing up to the last DLC, and you guessed it, it's somebody with a fully upgraded weapon of some kind. So in return, get yourself fully upgraded weapons, plus 10, plus 5 special weapons, anything, and be anywhere between soul level 80 and soul level 125. This takes into account the players who are going through the DLC on their first run, and the players who are going through the DLC on a new game plus or beyond. And that's about it for me. I know this video is a bit of a huge one to swallow, but I hope, all the same, that it helped you find more enjoyable online experiences in this crappy game known as Dark Souls 3. If you liked what you saw, subscribe for more terrible videos from yours truly. If it didn't help you in the slightest though, by all means, I want you to comment about how this video is subpar trash, and how I will never be as good as insert your favorite Souls YouTuber here. Go on. I'll wait. I know you want to say it. Just do it, man. Just do it. I dare you. I double dare you, mother...